Welcome back everybody, my name is Relic. We are playing the council. The last time we played, we found out that our host Mort and Gregory Holmes are demons. And our mother told us this. And she's a little bit crazy, I know. But uh, for now we'll pick up the items that she told us to pick up and see where it goes. Um, so far we've collected, I think, one item. Two items, two items. We got the Cross of Clement the Third, and we've gotten uh, da, 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 the exegen Exegesis of Judas. Uh, yeah, um, there's an armillary sphere somewhere. I'm not sure where. Uh, we want nails, which I believe we saw in the secret room behind uh, Mortimer's office uh, behind the nightmare. Um, and the Gutenberg Bible is the one we were using to solve the riddles up in the um, room across from Mortimer's office. So let's, uh, let's go up there first and grab the Bible. I feel like I walk by this every Atreus. time. The Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Right. Anybody in here? I feel like I'm not really on good terms with a whole lot of people in this place anymore. see Emily. Is she in here? Tending children at the orphanage in Harlem. I find it a little hard to understand this painting choice. King George III in coronation robes. Nice touch for the room of an English duchess. Can't open that box. How am I doing on collectible or consumables? up it looks like dear e i received your last letter unfortunately the crown informed the golden order that our mission should under no circumstances hamper sir gregory's plans decidedly they have support from the highest level in buckingham palace so here we both are hands and feet tied and little room to maneuver keep me abreast of events our mission is becoming more complicated. Yours, E. T.S. The French chapter of the Order doesn't appear to know anything about the arrival of our friend Sarah. I therefore cannot comment on it. However, my guess is that she has come here for personal reasons. Only a little bit personal. Grammar of Pont-Royal. Ah, the artistry of the French language in all its splendor. Whoever masters French commands the world, at least une partie of it. Wonder where she is. A letter from William Pitt the Younger addressed to Emily. He's the present Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Emily has indeed some powerful backers. Madam, thank you for consoling the Queen. 
The Keen situation is worsening, but I wager he'll recover from this present fit. Next time you speak with Her Majesty the Queen, would you please be so kind as to ask her to look into my petition to raise taxes with the King? I will personally see to it that our nation will recover from this impasse. But King George's mental situation is slowing down our decision taking. Thank you in advance for all your help. William Pitt, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. A ruble. Ugh. Two coils circle the lock. I think I'll just unlock it. Who needs keys anyway? Dear Gregory, thank you for the information. I've managed to find out about the names you gave me. George Washington is a man you can trust. In spite of his obvious talent for politics, he has remained upright and honest. On the other hand, as you may well know, he is already doing business with Lord Mortimer. It will be more difficult to approach him. Napoleon Bonaparte was unknown to me until today. He's a passionate young French soldier for whom Mortimer predicts a promising future. Take heed. He is a man of conviction, which to my mind makes him potentially dangerous. As for Sarah de Richet, what more is there to say? You already know each other. She was apparently invited by Lord Mortimer about an ongoing matter in Paris that concerns a receiver in stolen art. See you soon. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Carmelite water, huh? A letter from William Pitt the Elder addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Wow. Madam, I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, you'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. Queen Charlotte. All the royal family of England is there from what I can tell. Uh, oops. A devil's thorn to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. Oops, I can't carry it. Oh well. Dear Gregory. All right. I've retrieved everything. Well, I don't think there's anything else left in here. We got a Bonaparte's room, I guess, but. Oh, uh, Golden elixir, I already have. <clears throat> and let's go to that uh, room, I guess. I think the only person's room I haven't searched is Godoy's room. It's open, and he doesn't appear to be here. Manuel Godoy, a painting of himself in his room. Now that's not going to help him develop a sense of modesty. <laughs> I think we're long past that happening. Don Quixote. Talking without thinking is like shooting without taking aim. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that one. Prometheus. Punished for stealing fire from the gods and giving have it I to man. 
Or is there multiple Prometheus paintings in this place? I don't remember. Fragment of amber. Doesn't matter, got amber. I mean, amber. Charles IV of Spain. Now there's no chance of Godoy forgetting who he owes everything to. Yep, I've definitely been in here before. I remember now. This room haven't. Uh, maybe Cardinal's room. Is he currently in here? Oh, he is. Casually walk around here for a second. I have no time to lose, so I might as well not bother him. Okay. Don't really want to snoop around with him present anyway. We've looked at George Washington's room. This room had the uh, zinc password protected. Ooh, an armillary sphere. Perfect. That will save me some time. I only hope that he isn't going to realize it right away. Uh huh. The music got super intense. I'm totally gonna get found out. Ah, oh, Louis. Jesus! Glad you're here. Okay, scared the shit out of He's me. gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look, it's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain there must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? Uh. I don't know. Haha, <laughs> I thought he might be. There were... Pardon? There were more. Emma and my mother communicated through messages in this room. I found their correspondence and I preferred to burn it all so as not to leave any traces. But why didn't you say so? That's what I'm doing now, Mr. President. Before, well, it all seemed unimportant compared to everything that had happened. Uh, yes, you're right. Moreover, we ought to lend a helping hand. I shall have a word with Lord Mortimer, because the conference must not make us forget about Sarah. No. No thank you. No. I certainly don't want Mortimer giving me any more attention than he is at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. If you don't mind, I'll take care of it. As you wish. Keep persevering. I shall see you later. I wasted enough time. The Bible. Oh, he's still in here. Okay. Go ahead and grab <sighs> the this. The Bible 
Still there. Now all that's left is getting behind the nightmare. Sphere above the desk. I think we should take that one. Wow, the music is like super fucking intense right now. Hello, bird. Don't mind me, just breaking and entering again. Definitely won't get caught this time. Right. This time, it'll be a lot quicker. If I remember rightly, the code was 1191. What if you don't remember correctly? I don't remember correctly. One, one, nine. Oh, hello, Mortimer. I'm so, surprised to see you here. <laughs> of course. Looks like all this stuff is probably the same. Although I might have more abilities. Now. Golden elixir. The map of Europe. Someone's written 26 million in France. It's an estimated population of France. Mortimer knows very well that France has a higher population than its neighbors. He's preparing for it to go to war and knows he can make it happen by stirring up the people. I'm standing in front of a lesson of absolute mastery in military strategy, which is absolutely spine-chilling if it turns out that Mortimer is a demon. Hmm. Troops are directed oh, towards Italy. I get the feeling that Piazza is going to be in for a hard time. Conference might be focused on the United States, but Mortimer has an eye everywhere, which is not very reassuring if he really is a demon. Definitely a demon. I mean, your mom's not crazy at a all. A map of the triangular trade, organized by a demon, it makes me <laughs> want to throw up. Mortimer's plan succeeds, the United States will indeed double in size. It would mean the end of the Spanish presence in North America. Now, where were those nails? Right here. There! Those are the nails I was looking for. I, I noticed they were old and rusty, but but I hadn't noticed these traces of... Could that be blood? It, is it really the relic of the Holy Cross? I can hardly believe it. Mortimer's interested in black magic. Mortimer really is a demon. I wonder what he could be doing with all this. These drawers open before? I think they might have been. This music is making me super nervous. It's locked. C. 
six four six six I believe oh is it not gonna make me all right come on let's get out of here six four six six if I remember correctly don't mind me I'm just leaving definitely didn't break in a second time nothing to see here I don't know if I've ever gone down this way no way I get back to this room with my mom with nothing happening to me like something's definitely gonna stop me So notice that the stairway is wide open yet. So Good. You've managed to gather all the keys. Yes, that's right. I have everything. What should I start with? Place the Clement III cross on the console. Then you have to put the nails on the disc of the door. What theme did you start with? As the fresco shows the birth of Christ, I placed one nail in Bethlehem, one in Chapter 2, and one in in verse 6. The iris opened a little. I thought it was normal. Behind the aperture of the iris, there is a duct in which I put my hand. I felt something like a valve at the bottom. I thought by turning it the door would open, or the iris would open completely, or something else would happen. Instead, I felt something like an axe cut off my hand. I really thought Twelve? it was the end of me. What did you do then? Well, although I had made some unfortunate choices, I was lucky in that Mortimer was well stocked with drugs. I raided his supplies of medicine. What hole should I put the nails in? Well, I can't really advise you there, because I haven't exactly made the best choices myself. All I can say is that you have to insert one to choose a town, one to choose a chapter, and one to choose a verse. All right, my turn right. now. Go ahead, impress me. I'll shut up and let you concentrate. The cycle right. of the moons has no. nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. Okay. This exegesis contains comments from Judas on the different gospels. It only contains certain chapters and verses, and the chapters are indicated by Roman numerals. The lexicon refers to different chapters and verses from the exegesis of Judas.
chapter 14, Oops. verse 22. On the seventh of Nisan, 3793, Jesus shared his last supper in the cynical in Jerusalem. Chapter 2, verse 6. Jesus was born of Mary and Joseph on the 22nd of Tavith at midnight, 3,762, in the village of Bethlehem. Chapter 2, verse 6. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered of a child. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Read part of that again. Chapter 2, verse, two, verse six. 6. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered of a child. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, on, and Papa. they were sore afraid. Okay, so let's try Bethlehem chapter 2, verse 6. I don't actually remember what Mother said she did. The fresco clearly shows the birth of Christ. Louis, I can assure you that that is not the solution to this enigma. This fresco's only purpose is to mislead. I know that now. Please, focus on another theme about Christ. We'll have to trust her. I ain't trusting nobody. Yes, it's definitely a representation of the birth of Christ, but some of the details have flaked away. I can't see any other clues. One thing is for sure, this enigma deals with the life of Jesus, like my mother said. Hmm, it looks like there are three types of inscriptions. These towns have one thing in common. They're all related to the life and death of Jesus. For example, Jordan is the place of the baptism of Christ. Clearly, we have names of towns, Arabian numerals, and Roman numerals. Bethlehem. After two, verse, uh, that didn't appear to do anything. Okay. What was the verse in the Hmm. 
chapter 5, verse 2. Jesus cures the sick and lame on the 8th of Adar, 3,791, in Jerusalem, at the pool of Bethesda. All stand and fling away their canes. Chapter 5, verse 2. Now, there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called, in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of the blind, halting, and withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. verse 2 in Jerusalem or Bethesda. Cross is stuck in the mechanism. I can't do anything. Hmm. Interesting. Louis, be very careful. I got the same result just before losing my arm. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh... Let's, let's think about it a little bit. So what's going on here? We've definitely got, you know, the birth happening. Go with the opposite spin. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Yeah, Chapter 19, verse 17. Okay, same, same verse. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha where they crucified him and two That's others with him there. on either side and Jesus in the midst Oh boy. It works. Well done, Louis. I hadn't seen those other wheels. Try connecting the theme to see if it goes all the way. Try connecting the theme. There must surely be a connection between the wheels. There are different icons on this wheel, but it looks like some of them can't be connected to the other wheels. I think I can make out each one of the icons apart from the one covered in blood. Going clockwise from the one I just mentioned, we have the halo that represents the resurrection. The waves represent the baptism of Jesus. It's 
more difficult to identify the next one. Maybe a crib, and in that case it's surely linked to the birth of Christ. The red herring that my mother followed. Then, the symbol represents the crown of thorns that Jesus wore during his crucifixion. The dove also represents the baptism. Certainly another red herring. Then comes the symbol of the Trinity. And finally, the candle that must stand for the Last Supper. Okay. Let me analyze that again and uh, write down the various things that he said. I think I can make out each one of the icons apart from the one covered in blood. Going clockwise from the one I just mentioned, we have the halo that represents the resurrection. The waves represent the baptism of Jesus. It's more difficult to identify the next one. Maybe a crib and... In that case, it's surely linked to the birth of Christ, the red herring that my mother followed. Then, the symbol represents the crown of thorns that Jesus wore during his crucifixion. The dove also represents the baptism, certainly another red herring. Then comes the symbol of the Trinity, and finally, the candle that must stand for the Last Supper. Last Supper. Okay. We're looking for probably information on wounds and stuff. This wheel contains several symbols made up of one or two figures and one letter. The highest figure does not exceed 31, and each letter corresponds to a month of the year. A for April and M for March. I think okay. these symbols must represent a specific date. This wheel represents the different moons. In the occult sciences, we represent the full moon by an X. As for the dark moon, called the new moon, in cults, it's, well, it's often associated with something harmful. The totally black moon corresponds to the new moon, so, going clockwise, we have the waning crescent, the last quarter, the waning gibbous, the full moon, the waxing gibbous, the first quarter, and okay, lastly, down, the waxing crescent. They call that the waning half. The totally black moon corresponds to the new moon. So, going clockwise, we have the waning crescent, the last quarter, the waning gibbous, the full moon, the waxing gibbous, the first quarter, and lastly, the waxing crescent. This full waxing gibbous for the first quarter. Waxing crescent. Okay. We got the dates. Look at this. There are notches between each of the wheels. So, I have to link the name of the town from the theme I've chosen to an icon, then to a date, and finally, the date to the moon. 
So I have to link the name of the town from the theme I've chosen to an icon, then a date. Okay. So we want, I believe we chose Golga something. which would link to the Crown of Thorns, which we'll have to find reread to get the date. Okay, let's uh... I think this is a good spot to stop for now, um, and we will solve this puzzle, hopefully, on a return. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.